Welcome back. This is Covalent Bonding 2, looking at Lewis structures. Again, this is, uh, can be, for some people, one of the most difficult concepts up to this point in chemistry. And it's something that you really need to know to be able to move forward. So I've put a whole bunch of examples on here, and this section is going to be rather long. So if you're only looking to review part of this or only, only learn part of it, um, I've got a list down here, number one through four, of the, the subtopics that I'm going to talk about in this one video. I've chosen not to break it up into several videos, but put them all in one. So if you need to fast forward, you can. First thing we're going to look at are what I think are the easiest set of rules for drawing Lewis structures. And then we're going to look at drawing polyatomic ions with a formal charge. And then we're going to look at molecules with multiple bonds, double bonds and triple bonds, and then finally resonance hybrids and resonance structures, all type of Lewis structures. So, let's get started. Um, Lewis structures, also called electron dot diagrams. I was taught Lewis structures, um, but some people call them electron dot diagrams. You can call them whichever. They show how many electrons, E negative is just a symbol for electrons, are arranged into molecules. A dot represents an electron, an a valence electron only, um, and a line between two atoms represents a covalent bond. Now it's really important, anytime you see a line between two atoms, um, it means that there are two electrons on that line, and those two electrons are being shared by both of those atoms. So what do I mean? Well, let's look at hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen has um, how many valence electrons? It has one. Showed that in the previous video. Might need to go back and review that. So it's got one. If we put another hydrogen up there, then we've got this hydrogen has one. I'm sorry. This hydrogen has one, and this hydrogen has one, and it um, because hydrogen would like to have two valence electrons, those two are going to combine together, or they're going to share electrons. When they do that, we then draw them with a bar between it, and remember that bar shows those two electrons being shared, so that is a bond line. A quick review in determining valence electrons. All we have to do is look at the periodic table and the groups of the periodic table. Everything in group 1 has one valence electron. And everything in group 2 has two valence electrons. Um, this is group 13, but I'll call it group 3, and we're not going to worry about these down here in the Grand Canyon for now. Those are the transitions. Um, these have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and eight valence electrons, at least for the purposes of learning how to do this. Okay, so keep those in mind as we go along. Let's use an example of uh, drawing out a Lewis structure. We talked about water earlier. Um, we know that hydrogen has one valence electron. It will be happy when it has two. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It will be happy when it has eight valence electrons. That's why hydrogen and water um, share electrons in a covalent bond. Um, I'm sorry, hydrogen and oxygen share to make water. So hydrogen's going to come over here and share with the oxygen. We need one more hydrogen to come in here and share as well. Now, if we were going to draw this out in Lewis dot, um, and I'll show you this whole process here in just a second, but just this one as an example, here's what we've got. We've got an oxygen right here. We've got that oxygen bonded to a hydrogen right here, and we've got another hydrogen down here, and then notice we have those two unpaired electrons there, we've got two more unpaired valence electrons right there. This is a Lewis structure, it is the Lewis structure for water. We're going to learn how to check this, this hydrogen has two valence electrons, that's what this um, bond line shows, this hydrogen has two valence electrons, and oxygen, if we look at all of the valence electrons around it, Oxygen would like to have eight, and right here it's got two, four, six, eight. So everybody's happy. Here's a set of rules for what I just did. And I think this is the, the easiest way that I've found to put this into sequence. And really, if you follow the sequence and then you do the last one in the sequence where we're going to check our answer, it's nearly impossible to get them wrong. Now that can be frustrating for people because it is possible to get them out of order and get them wrong. Um, but if you just if you follow these steps, the likelihood of getting them incorrect and getting them out of order um, decreases significantly. 
At least that's what I've found in my experience. Number one, we're going to take our molecule and we're going to break it apart hypothetically and we're going to look at everything that it's made of. So each one of the elements in our molecule, we're going to break them apart and we're going to find out how many valence electrons do each of those have. So we're going to add them up. Now this, this next part here, if we have an overall formal charge, we need to add or subtract electrons. That'll make sense when we get to that part, just bear with me for now. Step two, we're going to build the skeleton structure with the bonds in place. Okay? When we build a skeleton structure, the element that's least abundant is oftentimes in the middle. Now, the element with the least electronegativity is the one that will generally always be in the middle, um, but then that, you have to look up all the electronegativities. For most of the simple ones we're going to start with today, if there's only one carbon and four chlorines, then carbon's going to be the middle one. Chlorines will go around the outside edge. Again, that'll make sense in a minute. We're going to take all the remaining electrons from step one, and we're going to add those with dots around the outside of our molecule until we've used all of them up. So we added up how many electrons do we get to build this thing, kind of like the nails that hold it all together. We're going to add those nails or add those electrons around the outside edge until we've used them all up. Then we're going to add brackets and a charge if the compound has a formal charge. We're going to draw any resonance structures if we need to. You'll understand what resonance structures or resonance hybrids are called in just a minute. And then finally, the last one, we're going to check our answer. The way we check our answer is all of the atoms must have eight electrons around the outside, except for hydrogen and helium, which we shouldn't have to deal with in bonding. But hydrogen only needs to have two. All the rest should have eight. So let's look at that. We'll start with chlorine gas, which is one of our diatomics that we just talked about. And I've got the instructions down here. I've also got um, the periodic table. This is a sort of a simplified one because I've got it small. But it's also from um, Wiki Commons. You can go there and you, you can find these on the internet. And this is just a simplified one to use for finding valence electrons. Now, if we go to step number one, step number one tells us that we need to add up the valence electrons for all of the elements. Well, we've got chlorine and we've got chlorine. So we've got two chlorines right here. So we go and we find chlorine. Chlorine is over here in group 17, and group 17 has seven valence electrons. Again, this group has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and these have eight. So they have seven. So that chlorine is going to bring seven electrons. This chlorine is going to bring seven electrons. When I add them up for step one, that gives me a total of 18 electrons to build my structure. Now, I don't have a formal charge. Formal charge would be like if there was a plus or a minus or something up there which doesn't exist um, in chlorine gas so we don't have to worry about that. Step two, we need to build our skeleton structure with the bonds. We only have two things. We have chlorine and we have chlorine. Again, this right here represents two electrons and the bond between them. So if we look at number three, we're going to add up electrons around the outside of the molecule. It means we're just going to put dots so I've already used two of them, and I get to use 14. So I've got two there, and I'm just going to start putting them around the outside edge. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and 14. So now I've used all 14 to build my structure. I can't add any more because I only have 17 to use. Um, then I go to number four. I need to add brackets if there's a formal charge. Again, we said there was no formal charge up here at all, so we don't have to worry about that. Resonance structures, we haven't even talked about what that is. This has no resonance structures. So finally, we check our answer, which is probably the most important step. Now, every element except for hydrogen should have eight valence electrons around it, okay? So let's look at this chlorine first. This chlorine has two, four, six, and this counts as two for this chlorine, so it has eight. It's happy. It wants to have eight. This chlorine has two, four, six, and it gets to count these as well because they're sharing them, so it has eight. So we've checked our answer. There's no way this can be wrong, and indeed, this is the Lewis structure for chlorine gas, CLCL, C, L, with the electrons around the outside edge. Let's go to the next one. Okay, methane. 
So methane is CH4. Um, we got to break this all apart hypothetically and add up, well, how many do we get to build this thing with? So I've got one carbon and I've got hydrogen, but I've got four hydrogens. I've got four hydrogens and only one carbon. So I come down here and I find carbon. Carbon is right there, which is one, two, three, four. So it's got four valence electrons. Hydrogen's right here in group one. It only has one valence electron. So I take four times one, and this is going to give me four electrons. I'm just going to move this guy over here, four electrons. And if I add these up, four plus four gives me eight electrons, eight E negative electrons, to build my methane structure. All right? So I've done number one. Let's go to number two. Number two says... I need to build the skeleton structure with the bonds. Okay, The element that's the least abundant is going to be in the middle and the one with the lowest electronegativity. Now you can look the electronegativity up on a periodic table um, and the thing is hydrogen has a low electronegativity but hydrogen can only bond with one other thing because it only wants to have two valence electrons. Carbon can bond with four. So hydrogen is never going to be our center structure. We're going to go with carbon or the center of our structure. So we've got carbon. Again, we've got four hydrogens. Let's draw these in. So we've drawn in our hydrogens. And let's see how many electrons um, for number three here we can add around the outside edge. So I've used two, four, six, eight to make my bonds. And I can only use eight electrons total. Now, let me go back a little bit and show you how this all works out. So, we've got carbon in the middle, and we know that carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. We've got four hydrogens. So, hydrogen can bring one here, this hydrogen can bring one here, this hydrogen can bring one here, this hydrogen can bring one here. Now, when those bond together, that's why that bond represents two electrons between them being shared. I can use eight electrons. I've used two, four, six, eight electrons. So I can't use any more electrons. Um, I don't have a formal charge and I don't have any resonance structures. I don't need to worry about those. Again, you'll know what those are in just a little bit. Now I need to check my answer. The way I check my answer is I count up how many valence electrons does everything have around it. This hydrogen right here has two valence electrons, so it's happy. This hydrogen has two valence electrons, so it's happy. This one has two, so it's happy, and this one has two. Now carbon um, would like to have eight. So remember it's sharing. It's got two from this bond, two from this one, two from this one, and two from this bond, which means it has eight electrons around it, and everybody's happy. So this is the structure of methane. Let's try another one. Ammonia. This is the last one we're going to try um, with more of the basic structure and then we're going to move on to looking at something with an eye that's ionized. It's got an overall formal charge. So ammonia, step number one, we got to break it up into all of its parts and pieces. We have a nitrogen, so we need to figure out how many valence electrons that nitrogen has. We've got hydrogen, and we've got three hydrogens. So we come over here, we can start with that hydrogen. It's in group one, it's got one electron. Three times one equals three electrons. And the nitrogen is way over here, so we got one, two, three, four, five. There's nitrogen which means it's got five electrons. I'll put it, just move it over here so it's easy to see. I've got five plus three means I've got eight electrons to build my structure. So I've done number one. Number two, I'm going to build my structure. Now nitrogen is going to go in the middle because there are few nitrogens and hydrogen can only make one bond. So I've got my nitrogen right here and nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, 
two, three, four, five. Again, we don't pair them up until we have enough to pair them up. And I've got three hydrogens. So one hydrogen looks like it could probably go right here. One can go here and one could go over here. We can't put one up here because there are two electrons there. There's no room for it to make a bond. So let me get rid of that. Now we said when we're making these bonds, those are going to share. So we're going to have a bond there, a bond there, and a bond there. Let's count them up. So we added in all of our electrons, um, or we need to count them up and see if we've used them all. In this bond, we've got two. This bond, we've got two more. That makes four. This bond, two more. We have six. And counting these two up here, we've used eight. That's how many we get to build our structure. So let me go ahead and erase that part. Um, and all we got to do, we don't need brackets because we don't have a charge. We don't need resonance structures. We just need to check our answer. Again, hydrogen only needs to have two valence electrons. So this hydrogen has two right there. This hydrogen has two. This hydrogen has two. Nitrogen wants to have eight. So nitrogen's getting two from this bond, two from this bond, two from this bond, and two. Those are called a lone pair. That gives it a total of eight. So we've checked our answer. Everybody's perfectly happy. That means our structure for ammonia is just like this. All right. So let's complicate things a little bit. 